Today is my first cozy mystery craft and probably just like you, I'm hoping it's a good one. I love knitting, crochet, sewing, and more recently I've gotten into tatting. I also love a good cozy mystery. For those who aren't familiar with the term, a cozy mystery is, I think, Murder, She Wrote. I have no idea how Jessica Fletcher managed to travel without some sort of warning on her passport, but there it is. Or if books are more your speed, maybe the original cozies like Agatha Christie's Miss Marple and Nick and Nora Mysteries, or for something a little more up to date, the Thursday Murder Club. A lot of older patterns, particularly those in vintage and antique pattern books, don't have pictures, or if they do, they're not always the clearest. I've always been fascinated with these little crafty mysteries, and if you've seen my Shetland wool scarf or Edwardian reticule videos, then you know I've been into this for quite a while. I've culled a whole bunch of patterns from various sources in various crafts. I have a book of 99... Seriously, folks? I've culled a whole bunch of patterns from various sources in various crafts. I have a book of 99 granny squares by Leisure Arts that I've never really delved into because until I started learning how to crochet from vintage sources, I was utterly pants at it. I've papered over the cover and color plates in my copy so that my brain doesn't search for the photo references because they are all numbered. I have tatting, knitting, and crochet recipes from various books in the Antique Pattern Library, and while that brings me to a current total of 204 possible patterns, I'm likely going to be adding more from the University of Southampton's Knitting Reference Library on archive.org. Probably because I'm a glutton for punishment. <laughs> These are all fairly small to medium-sized projects. They have to be fairly grab-and-go, so I still have time to work on my other projects. Otherwise, nobody's getting socks for Christmas. I'm relying on the sheer volume of patterns and an aging memory to keep the surprise in the mystery. I've numbered all of my slips of paper and tossed them into a cauldron. We'll pull one out and find its corresponding number in the mystery manuals. If this method seems familiar to you, then you've probably seen the Vintage Mystery Crochet videos on Just Vintage Crochet's channel. Corinne does fantastic work with a crochet thread, so if you're one of the maybe 10 people on the yarny, thready side of CraftTube who haven't seen her channel, I definitely recommend it. A note about the Leisure Arts Granny Square book, I won't be sharing images of the printed pattern due to copyright restrictions. If you have a copy of your own, please feel free to follow along. I know the book's been in print for a long dang time, because this isn't even my first copy, I don't think. I think Mum had an old falling apart copy she stole from one of my grandmothers. Or my friend Barry Bell had a copy. Either way, this one is copyright 1998. It's also not very expensive. I'll put an affiliate link down below the video if you'd like to support the channel at no extra cost to yourself. Or you could check it out of the local library. I am a huge fan of libraries. I have no idea what I'm going to do with all these things when I'm done, but I am sure it's going to be interesting. Maybe we'll patch some of these things together and make a blanket or a sweater, or some accessories. Who knows? Maybe I'll start applicating things. For all I know, I'll have handmade Christmas gifts coming out my ears. <laughs> so, let's get started. Come on, amateur sleuths, let's take a look at our clues and see which pattern is our first victim. I guess it's time to reach in and grab ourselves our first contestant. Let's take a look and see what we get. What we got we have number 53 let's look up number 53 there we go we're going to be making ourselves a granny square 
It sounds like a storm's rolling in. This will be fun. Okay, so sometime last year I went on a little bit of a spree over at Walmart and I picked up some Bernat Premium. I think this will do the job just nicely. So, uh, looks like I'm looking for a 5.5 millimeter hook. We'll see how that works. Uh, looks as though we're getting a storm rolling in. Hopefully I won't lose my lights. That would be a shame. Well now. Okay, so it looks like we've got everything we need put together. I'm just going to get a bolt to put everything in. And in fact, I have a new cauldron. So we'll just put him over here and that started. Now what I've done is I've taken a picture of my pattern and put it up on my computer monitor in front of me so I can actually see what I'm doing because I tried earlier to get this done and not only did it get too way too hot in here, I mean we're having a heat wave, but also I wound up with quite the neck strain from trying to crane my neck over to one side to see the book. So taking a picture of it, put it on the computer monitor and that will make it a lot easier. So we're supposed to chain four. So one, two, three, four. And then came into the first one. I'm never sure if they mean into here or into the knot. Honestly, I, I couldn't tell you. So we'll just go in through there and slip stitch. Okay, so in four, two, three, four. And then DC in the ring, chain one seven times. Full crochet. Chain one. A chain one. How many we got there? Got one, two, three, four, five. slip stitch to the beginning and four so. whoops perfect holes a little bit bigger than I would have wanted Let's see if we can pull it down a little good Okay, and it wants us to get a stitch marker and mark off the first stitch. Got one of those around here somewhere. Slip stitch into the first space. And then do chain three, two, three, 
what I need to do is Was it chain two? Uh, okay. through all four loops okay so once we've got this first cluster done we chain three one two three and then we work another cluster around so one two Three, leave, we put in a fourth. Yeah, all five loops. Oop. One, two, three, and then to the next cluster. And then through all five of the loops. Whoop. And then do another chain three. And I'll meet back at the last base. There we go. All right, so we're at our last chain space. So one more cluster. One, two, three, and four, and then through all five of the loops, then one, two, three, and then what we do, actually, I think. I've gotten that slightly wrong. I think it's one chain, so we'll go back here to the very top of our cluster. Oh, it's a chain one and a half double crochet into the top. And there we go. One, two, three, and then two double crochets into that same space. One, two, there we go. Awesome. All right, and then we chain one. Then we do three double crochets. Oops. Two. Three. So a basic granny stitch. And then we chain one. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a corner turn in here. So this is going to be a corner here, one in the middle, do a corner. So it's three double crochets, chain two, and then three more double crochets in this space. And then when we go on to the next space, it'll be 
chain one, three double crochets, chain one, and then another corner space. So you're gonna wind up with four corners all the way around. So, I'll just do the first corner here. One. Two. Three, chain two, and then another one, two, three. So there we've got our corner. And we chain one and as I said this one is going to be a cluster of three double crochets and then this will be another corner turn so I will meet back up with you once we get to this end right here okay so I am all the way back around to here where we're supposed to link up back to the corner as you can see from doing single granny then a corner, then a single granny, then a corner, single granny, then a corner, then a single granny. Starting to come into shape. Okay, so. One. two, and three, and then you single crochet into the first double crochet. Actually, chain one. And then you single crochet. There we go. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is chain three, two DC in the same space, chain one, three DC in the next chain one space. So you're pretty much carrying the same sort of pattern around, so. Chain three. And then two more double crochets in that same space. Chain one. Apparently, ah, I see what I did. Let's try that again, shall we? There we go. Double crochet. Double crochet and then chain one. And then we're gonna double crochet. Oh, the yarn is so splitty. How can you tell it's been a while since I've done any kind of crochet work? <laughs> I'm just glad I've got new glasses so I can have a good idea of what I'm doing. All right, so again, once we get to the corner, we'll do another corner turn. I have mad respect for Corinne for being able to do this on a regular basis and being able to make it not only entertaining, but educational. <laughs> I'm just having enough trouble keeping my hands in the right place in the frame. And that's with me using my monitor to actually see what I'm doing. So uh, mad respect, Corinne, if you see this.
All right, so this is going to be a corner turn. So we'll do three double crochets. And then two. And then another three. As we turn the corner. And then another one to get us into this next space. So all that we've really done is we've just added another space to have to do a single granny cluster into. Which is fine. And if I'm reading this correctly, because the instructions are saying rounds four and five, that the next the next round is going to be almost exactly the same as this, so we'll probably have one more uh, one more space to be able to go into. So it's just going to be a matter of alternating our corners and our single granny clusters. And I have to say that little cauldron is just the right size for a yarn bowl. So if you have any kind of uh, interest in spooky season or uh, interesting yarn accoutrements, I definitely recommend it. Should be big enough to handle most balls, except for, of course, the really large ones like the original skein of Bernat. This is this is not the full ball of yarn. I did about one and a half balls or one and a quarter balls uh, because. I got most of the way through the original Bernat skein and my yarn winder couldn't handle it. And I know most people don't rewind those uh, commercial balls, but I didn't want to be yanking a commercial ball rolling all over the place. So eventually all of my commercial skeins will wind up getting rolled into balls and I'm gonna have to find a place to store them. I'll probably have to buy or make another Ikea Kallax bin. I don't know whether you have been watching, I think it's called Ophelia Talks, but they recently put together a crochet along that was making a box that would actually fit into a Kallax unit, which is uh, the cube shelving from Ikea. So that might be something very interesting to try out at some point. Personally, I'd be more inclined to go with plastic canvas myself, but the way that they made the crocheted Kallax uh, box. It was done with a couple of handles on the side so you could turn it into a bag. So basically store it in your Kallax unit when you're at home and then when you need to take it out on the road you can just pick up the box and go and it turns into a bag. So that's pretty fancy. Okay. Turned that corner okay? Yes, I did. And we are almost back at the beginning of the round.
Okay, so we double crochet three times into the same space as our originals. Chain two and single crochet into the first stitch. And then we do it all over again. Chain three, back into the space. We double crochet another couple of times. Chain one, and off we go around for one more, one more row. Okay, so I will meet back up with you over here. And normally I, I think I would probably prefer to do my usual way of doing things, which would be, which would be shots of actually me doing the crochet rather than just top down. But with this being a granny square, I didn't see this being any huge major adventure. So either way. What I will do is I will meet you all the way back around here and we'll do that final round. Okay, and once again, I am right back to that last little cluster and I've already gotten a little bit of a stockpile for the next round to come. So we're just going to double chain three times. One, two, and three. Ah. Chain two, and single chain into that last, or first stitch. Okay, now the directions say that we're to chain three, double chain in the same space, and then in each double chain, in each chain one space across to the next corner, at which point we'll do two double chains, chain two, and then two double chains. So, two, three, and into the space. And right, we don't chain one, we just double chain all the way across. And forgive me if I'm missing spaces, if you're a more proficient crocheter. I'm still kind of just muddling through on this. I tried getting a start on this last night after I pulled the number. This is actually the next morning. Uh, basically what happened was my neighbors started having a party in their backyard and it was getting rather loud and we're having a heat wave. So I was sweltering and hearing the next door neighbors do nothing but party. And then my nails started chipping, which is another one of those things. My nails have a tendency to, to chip and polish tends to peel very easily. So after trying to fix the problems with my nails and getting rather hot and flustered and having a lot of background noise from next door. I just said, you know what? I'm gonna wake up really early the next morning and get this done. So there's your, there's your full disclosure. <laughs> Today is the next day, uh, but uh, I'm glad I waited because this is a lot more fun when you're not, when you're not turning three different shades of red or pink. See, that, that's the problem with being an, a very fair complexioned person. 
I'd go to the gym and within two minutes of standing on the treadmill, barely even walking, I'd have a trainer coming up to me saying, are you okay? It's like, well, yes, I'm fine. Well, you're turning beet red. Yes, I do that. I'm of Scots-Irish heritage. I blame my dad. Okay. So I don't know if you notice what I did there. We're in the corner, so I DC'd twice, chained twice, and we double chain two more times. And just continue around the circle. Honestly, I'm just double chaining wherever I, you know, see happen to see a stitch pop up. So as I said, if you're a more proficient crocheter and you're sitting there just, you know, screaming, please, please, for the love of God, don't do that. Well, the comments are your friends, my friend. <laughs> Let me know what I'm messing up down there. Uh, while I'm at it, because we're coming up towards the end of this particular granny square or doily or whatever it's turning into, uh, I'd like to actually thank my patrons. I had a couple of new ones join up last this past month. So thank you very, very much. So if I am not mistaken, I think my three latest patrons are Haley, Sarah, and Laura, so welcome. I'm still working out what the what the new changes are going to be to my patron, Patreon rather, and we'll see how that goes, but needless to say, we do have a couple of tiers. My patrons do get to see my my videos a day early whenever possible. And it's very rare that I have any kind of solid deadline, but I am going to try and get a video out at least once per week. That is my goal. It's one of the reasons why I'm doing some of the mystery crochet work, or mystery crochet crafting tatting, is to try and give myself some smaller projects that can be done in a smaller amount of time while I'm working on the big projects. I will mention that the SAG-AFTRA uh, union strike has kind of put a crimp in a couple of the things I've been working on. Uh, I am not a member of SAG-AFTRA, but I do stand in solidarity with them. I do have family members who are working in the film industry, so their safety and uh, their needs being met is important. Uh, not only that, but I have done extra work in the past, so I don't know whether it was SAG after or whether it was ACTRA or one of the other acting unions here in Canada, but I have previously been a part of an acting union, even though it was very brief. And so, oops, is that three? That would be three. Let's keep going. So I do support the actors, particularly the ones who are starting out. Like some of the things that I am hearing is that they would scan people in for things like crowd shots. You'd get like one day's worth of pay and you'd pretty much be dismissed. And the studio would have access to your likeness whenever they wanted it. So you'd get one day's worth of pay, and yet they could get a lifetime's worth of work out of you. And of course, they're they're trying to say, oh no, we wouldn't do that, but come on. See, one of the ways that people become actual actors is hanging around on the set as an extra or a background actor, I guess they're calling us, calling it now. And that's one of the ways that people actually learn their enthusiasm for the craft and the art. So why would why would you want to actually get in the way of that? But the thing is, there is encouragement for folks to not 
actually um, do promotional work for the studios, particularly work that the actors would normally be doing. And I can understand that. So anything that I have in the works that has anything to do with what's called struck work is currently on hold, which basically just means that my deadline's been pushed back a little bit. So that'll mean that hopefully it will be a nicer video in the long run. <laughs> I'm looking at it as a bonus rather than a drawback. But those are most of the things that I think have been on my mind while I've been doing this sort of work. I can see that this could be, you know, one of those stream of consciousness things that gets me into trouble. <laughs> Anyhow, what I'm going to do is I am going to finish up this last side and we'll meet back at the very beginning because I'm starting to get rather warm. My hands are starting to flush. And uh, I'd really like to turn a fan on. So <laughs> I'll just get this done really quick. Meet you back at the beginning and we'll do the wrap up. All right. All right, so I am right back around to the corner. So let's do our two double crochets. One. Two, two chains and I'm just going to slip stitch first crochet and there we go where's my scissors And I'll just pull that through. That is lovely. I like that. I don't know what I'm going to do with it. It may turn into a nice coaster around here or something to, I don't know, set the cauldron on. Who knows? But it's definitely pretty. Let me just take off the stitch marker. Perfect. Yeah, I like that. Now, according to the book, the designer is Martha Brooks Stein. So I would like to thank Martha Brooks Stein for making such a nice granny square. A nice flower in the middle, rounded by granny clusters and a bunch of double crochets on the end. So that is sweet. I like that. So thank you very much to Martha Brooks Stein for such a gorgeous granny square. Uh, again, thank you to my patrons because they are part of what allows me to continue making these videos. And thank you to you for watching and subscribing if you wish. So it looks as though our mystery is over. We have a granny square made with yarn in my office. <laughs> I don't know whether it gets any more clue than that. Uh, but yeah. Well, thank you for joining me and I will see you again soon. I have a couple of larger projects in the works right now and hopefully one of them will be the next project that you see. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.